guys, today we've got the brand new Hobbywing Quick Run WP10 BL60 G2 ESC. They've made some pretty decent improvements to this over the previous version, and if this thing turns out to be any good, this could be the best cheap ESC you can get for those smaller cars. This ESC is coming with a new smaller case, a new fan, better temperature sensing. Hobbywing says it has advanced freewheeling design, which I'm not entirely sure what means. This thing's IP67 waterproof, and to go along with that, we do have the new Quick Run G2 brushless motor. We're gonna take this apart in just a minute to see what's new inside here. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at this. We've got some fairly small 14 gauge wire here with four millimeter bullets, which is fine for most smaller motors. We have a shared fan and programming port. This is still programmable via your standard program boxes, as well as via the set button. A lot of the Hobbywing ESCs are going away from that ability. This is a waterproof switch, though it isn't their more advanced button style. This particular ESC did not come with a connector. It seems like Hobbywing's going away from putting connectors on their ESC. ESCs. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. A lot of times you end up swapping out the connector anyway, so it's really not that big of a deal. It doesn't have any holes for mounting screws in the bottom, so you are going to be mounting this with double-sided tape. They do include double-sided tape. However, I'm not sure I'd recommend using this. I've had problems with their double-sided tape where it didn't really stick all that well. If you're going to mount with double-sided tape, go the extra mile and make sure you use good quality 3M VHB. This stuff sticks really, really well, and if you install it correctly, your ESC will not come undone. Taking a quick look at the manual, we can see this is a 60 amp continuous 360 amp burst ESC. That's something to keep in mind with these ESCs. Even though it says it's a 60 amp ESC, this thing can put out a lot more than 60 amps for a very short period of time. Like you can see here, 360 amps is the maximum. And that's why these things can seem a lot more powerful than their specifications say. This is 2 and 3S LiPo compatible. And unfortunately, they did not update the BEC for 7.4 volts. I really would have liked to have seen them do that because these days, most servos are 7.4 four volts compatible and it really wakes them up. Speaking of compatibility, in just a few minutes, we're going to be trying this thing out in the brand new Haubeo Hyper TT 2.0. Then we're going to put this thing in something it wasn't designed for and see what it can really do. Before we do that, let's take a look at this fan. Under this fairly easy to remove cover, we have a 30 millimeter six volt fan rated at 0.26 amps, fairly standard fan, so you could definitely upgrade this down the road. We've got a nice aluminum heat sink, then under that you can see the waterproofing, as well as two Rubicon filtering capacitors. That's one really nice thing about these Hobbywing ESCs is they do use good components. A lot of the other off-brand ESCs are not going to have Rubicon capacitors, and they're much higher quality than no-name brand ones. Speaking of waterproofing, this thing is IP67 water and dust Proof. That means it's going to be pretty much impervious to anything you throw at it short of sinking your truck in a lake. Interestingly, Hobbywing does state in the manual that the waterproofing can degrade over time, which I suppose is true, but I think that's more of a CYA thing for them than something you really need to be worried about. Speaking of waterproofing, I want to mention that Hobbywing actually has two 10BL60 ESCs. They have this one, and then they've got the smaller one that's actually censored and not waterproof. It can be pretty confusing since they have the same name, but they definitely have different features. This is a bigger ESC that's designed for a little bit larger vehicles and general bashing because it's waterproof, and the other one one is a censored ESC that's more designed for smaller scale and racing. Not only is this ESC waterproof, but it also has a stronger BEC at 3 amps as opposed to the other 10 BL60, which is only 2 amps. Now let's take a look at this G2 motor that goes along with it. Most manufacturers claim that their motors are waterproof. However, that's kind of a misnomer because whereas all brushless motors technically are waterproof, most of them kind of technically aren't as well. And the reason I say that is primarily right here. This is a shielded bearing, not a sealed bearing. And no matter how close of a fit you get with this end bell, water will get inside this bearing and it'll bring grit with it and it will destroy these bearings. So if you take most brushless motors and put them in water or mud, you're going to end up killing these bearings pretty quickly. The only real exception I've seen to that have been the G2 ESCs from Hobbywing because they actually use sealed bearings and have O-rings on the cases. Okay, so as we can see here, we just have a pretty standard looking rotor. These are permanent magnet motors, which means there are neodymium magnets in here. This is Kevlar wrapping around them. And that Kevlar wrapping is what stops those magnets from flying off the rotor at really high speeds. This is another thing that can get damaged by debris. If you get dirt or grit in there, it can wear away this Kevlar, and eventually those magnets can come flying off. As you can see, we've got a little bit of balancing weight on the front and rear, so this should be a nice smooth motor. And inside here, we've got a pretty basic looking setup. Again, though, with a shielded bearing in the front. Our first victim is going to be this awesome Hobeo Hyper TT 2.0. If you haven't seen my full review on this, make sure you check it out after this video. Before we get the 10BL60 in there, we got to take this 10BL120 out. Now, even though these two ESCs have very similar names, they're pretty different in how they're designed. 
And the 10BL120 is basically a Max 10 SCT G1. That's got some slight updates to it. As you can see, it's a little bit bigger than the 10BL60, but not much. And unlike the 10BL60, this does have a 7.4 volt BEC, though it does have a smaller cooling fan, which I find interesting. To make it even more confusing, there is another 10BL120 as well. And that is similar to the other 10BL60, where it's censored, not waterproof, and not really designed for bashing. Now, before we get this installed, let's get a connector put on. I'm gonna go ahead and use an EC5, just because that's what most of my batteries are. You could probably get away with an XT60, though it might be on the edge with its 360 amp burst current. There are quite a few different EC5 connectors available out there. I got these on Amazon and they work really, really well. I've had some people say they've had problems with EC5s not being able to snap into the connectors. These snap in from the back and I've never had any problems with them. What's your go-to connector these days? Lately, I've been using mostly XT90s and QS8s. Though I do think these EC5s are pretty easy to connect and disconnect and actually have a higher amp rating than the XT90s. Let me know down in the comments what you like. And while you're down there, if you enjoy all the latest news and reviews, make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss anything. All right, let's get this installed. One thing to mention is if you're going to use double-sided tape, make sure you remove any stickers from the bottom of your ESC. You might want to retain these though, as this is the serial number and it might be important if you have to do a warranty claim. I'm going to put this down on top of adhesive that's already there. I definitely recommend not doing this. This is just for testing purposes, but this definitely reduces adhesion. We definitely don't want to be taking it easy on this ESC, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this big beastie castle motor in here, as opposed to installing the motor that I got with the ESC. Make sure you test everything before putting it back together because it's a real pain to have to take everything back apart when you realize that you reversed your ESC and your servo on the receiver. All right, so this is running in reverse. We could just switch two of these wires as long as it's a sensorless setup, or we can go ahead and change it in the programming. I'm really curious to see if this ESC works with the new multifunction program box. Let's check it out. I would hope it would. Okay, so unfortunately, no matter what I do, I just get this update database. I updated the database. I even updated the firmware. So at this time, the multifunction LCD program box pro does not work with this ESC. The good news is that the much less expensive program card does work. And even though the settings are different from what you see down here, it gives you the ability to change everything you want, and those settings are listed in the manual. If you want to go even more basic, you can still use the set button on this ESC, which isn't true for a lot of Hobbywing ESCs. Instructions on how to do that are also in the manual, but be prepared for a little bit of frustration because it's a bit tedious. All right, guys, she's all set up. Let's see what this little thing can do. And when we come back, it's going to be time for a torture test. <laughs> Well, so far I'm pretty impressed with this ESC. It feels plenty powerful enough and it's not really getting that hot. As you can see here, it's actually cooler than the motor is. The only issue I had was the brake was turned up way too high and it kept doing front flips. But we figured it would do okay in this car. Let's take it out of here and put it in something much bigger. This is the brand new Red Cat Valkyrie and it is way bigger and way heavier with a much larger motor. It's definitely gonna put this little ESC to the test. Before we do that, we need to fix this shock. If you haven't seen my previous videos on the Valkyrie, some of the shocks have a pretty significant weak point in them. And that's because the original style shocks use a clip style press in lower eye. I did get some replacements through warranty from Red Cat. I'm curious to see if these are the press in kind or the thread in kind. This one is the press in kind as is this one. So the replacement ones I got are pressing. I'm not sure what the replacement ones you'll get will be. I have talked to Red Cat about this and they are working on the problem. Most people would drain the fluid to replace one of these shock shafts, but you don't really need to. As long as you're careful, you can do it without having to do that. Just push the shock shaft up as far as it can go without actually going past the seals. Grab it with a pair of pliers. And then you can just use one of these small cross wrenches to remove the nut. Then put the bladder and the cap back on. Flip the whole thing over, pull the old shaft out. Put your new shaft in, flip it over again, take the cap back off, then just put it back together again. Now you might need to add a little bit of fluid and re-bleed it, but you don't have to completely drain the shock and make a big mess. These plastic on plastic balls can be pretty difficult to remove, especially when they get jammed up with dirt like this one has. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my flush cutters and cut the old joint around the ball. 
and that'll make it really easy to get that ball out of there. Pressing it in is a lot easier than taking it out. There we go, now we just need to get this reinstalled and get that ESC swapped out. All right, guys, she's all installed. Let's see what this little ESC is really capable of. Well guys, I have to say I'm really impressed with this little ESC. This is way too much vehicle for it. And whereas it did actually go over temperature once and it was struggling in some places, it did pretty darn well for a little 60 amp ESC. It was really good on the small one tenth scale vehicle. And overall for 40 bucks, this thing has a lot to offer. I'm also impressed with the BEC on it. It's only six volts at three amps, but it was able to turn these big tires as well as run the Pro Modeler Servo that I had in the other car. Now, obviously there are a lot of choices in the 40 to say $70 price range, but if you're looking for something that's cheap, small, and punches pretty well above its weight class, you could do a lot worse than one of these. That's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss future videos, and then check out one of these.